They were in for a treat when they found out they were having a boy instead of a girl. Angie and Gina were thrilled when Angie's first pregnancy ended in a baby boy. They felt the same happiness when their second son was born a couple of years later. But even though they were happy, they wanted a girl. A few years later, their dream came true. But not in the way they had planned. Angie and Gino talked about names for their kids early on in their relationship and agreed that they wanted at least one boy and one girl. After their wedding, they were excited to start planning for a family. Angie's pregnancies gave birth to two healthy boys, whom they loved. But they still wanted a girl. Angie and Gino decided that their family wasn't complete since they were celebrating all of their son's important events in Southern California. They wanted a daughter and for their sons to have a sister. So they chose to try for a third child, hoping for a girl. They were just as happy to have another boy. Though, they hoped for a healthy pregnancy with no problems. Angie took a pregnancy test one day and was thrilled when it came back positive. She wanted to make sure she was pregnant and find out what gender the third baby would be. So she made an appointment for an ultrasound with her doctor. Angie would have been happy with either a boy or a girl. But since she didn't already have a child, she hoped for a girl. Angie was thrilled to find out that she was going to have a girl after a blood test showed what gender the baby would be. Being excited about having a girl. Angie and Gino couldn't contain their joy. A follow-up scan showed that Angie wasn't just carrying one girl. The doctor thought this was strange. Angie and Gino were shocked to find out they were going to have triplets. At first, the couple was shocked and didn't know what to think. More information about Angie's unique pregnancy came out in later ultrasounds. The doctor found two placentas. Which meant that even though Angie had three kids, two of them shared a placenta because they came from the same egg. Three babies were growing inside Angie. Two sets of identical twins and a third child made from a different egg cell. The doctors made it clear that this was a very rare event. Angie and Gino were happy that their dreams had come true and they would have a daughter. But they were also worried. The doctor told them about the problems that could happen with having triplets. Based on the fact that Angie and Gino didn't. Use in vitro fertilization. The chances of them having triplets naturally were very low. About 1 in 40 hundred. The fact that two of the babies might have been the same made the situation even less usual. Getting ready for the birth of three babies took a lot of planning. Angie and Gino didn't waste any time because they knew that their lives were about to change in a big way. They got a car, hired a nanny, and asked friends and family for help to get through the hard times ahead. They both asked their bosses for parental leave so that they could be there for each other when the babies were born. Angie's pregnancy was considered high risk because she was having triplets. Her doctor, Dar, Dana Schmond, warned her that this pregnancy would be very different from the last two. Angie knew that twins and triplets were more likely to be born early or have problems while they were still in the womb. So she was mentally ready for any problems that might come up. But she wasn't emotionally ready for what happened. Angie had major problems while she was 26 weeks pregnant with the triplets. During an interview with Sharp Healthcare, she said that one baby's fluid levels were too low and another baby's were a bit too high. The amount of fluid around kids is very important for their health and safety as they grow. To make sure Angie and the babies were safe, she and her doctors had to move right away. The couple chose to do something very drastic because they were having a very major problem with their high-risk pregnancy. Unbalanced fluid levels were a big risk because they could cause babies' brains to bleed and their lungs to not grow properly. Dar. Schman told Angie that she should stay in the hospital for the last 14 weeks of her pregnancy so that she could be closely watched. It made Angie sad to hear her news. But she was determined to do everything she could to have her children safely. She had to put her life on hold and spend less time with her two boys because of this choice. Angie had to stay in bed for a long time. Away from her family and home. Even though she wasn't sick. Angie had a hard time getting used to living in the hospital full-time when she was 26 weeks pregnant. She wasn't looking forward to it. Gino made sure that every day their boys went to see their mom. Even though the hospital wasn't the best place to live. The family ate meals together there while they got ready for the birth of their triplets. And Gino did everything he could to make Angie feel at home. Me in the hospital. At least they were all together. 
The nurses knew how hard it was for Angie to be away from everything she knew and helped her get used to being away from everything. Tony Hicks, RN, told Sharp Healthcare. They're taken away from everything that's normal. So by telling them, you know, I understand that this is really hard for you. That's huge for our patients. The hospital staff knew that Angie was having a hard time being away from home and did everything they could to make her feel better. Because Angie didn't want to mess up her boy's routine too much. She spent a lot of time in the hospital by herself. He had to stay home with the boys and not be with Angie. Gino wanted to cheer up his wife. So he and Angie agreed to go on hospital dates. On these nights, they ate dinner together in Angie's hospital room. Which was a special way for them to get closer. Aggie said. This is our date night that we never get to have at home. Angie was told to stay in bed for most of her time in the hospital. But she could be moved around in a wheelchair for small amounts of time. Her medical team sometimes showed her around the neonatal intensive care unit to get. Her ready for the chance that her babies might need to stay there if they were born early. Although there were problems. Angie liked that her medical team was ready for anything that might happen. Angie was sure she was in good hands because she didn't see the NICU as a sad place but as a place that gave her strength. By working together with her medical team, she made a birth plan that made her feel in charge. Even though Angie had heard of problems with triplets or identical twins, she saw the NICU as a place where she and her kids were always being watched to make sure they were growing properly. Doctors found that baby B was smaller than babies A and C during regular ultrasounds. This is normal for identical twins who share a placenta. Angie's cheerful attitude and the support of her medical team made it easier for her to deal with the hospital while she was pregnant with a high-risk baby. But this meant that baby B needed to be watched more closely. The doctors paid extra attention to baby B's growth during every scan they did. Angie knew it was likely that she wouldn't be able to carry the babies for the whole 30 weeks. She hoped that the babies would stay inside her for a total of 34 weeks. Which would give them enough time to grow enough to survive outside the womb. If the baby was born B. For 34 weeks. There was a greater chance that it would have serious problems or organs that were not fully formed. Even though Angie didn't like being in bed all the time. She was determined not to end the pregnancy early. After 30 weeks. She was hopeful about the growth of the triplets and was taking each day as it came. Angie was eager to meet her new babies. But she wouldn't let them until they were ready. The triplets would get bigger as time went on inside her womb. Angie admitted that she didn't know what would happen in the days before her due date because she was thinking. About problems like labor contractions she couldn't stop and the chance of having to have an emergency c-section. She stressed counting days instead of weeks in an interview with Sharp Healthcare. Angie wanted to be 34 weeks. But the triplets had other ideas. To make sure the birth went smoothly. Gino prayed for Angie as she went into labor at only 32 weeks. Gino was excited for the birth of three little stars as she was wheeled into the operating room for the planned C-section. Angie had thought about having a normal birth at first. But she chose a C-section because she was worried about her safety. Which was what the medical team thought was best. While the process was going on, Gino held Angie's hand. Daniela, Annabella, and finally their third daughter Camilla were born. The babies were born a few weeks early and needed medical help right away. As soon as they were born, each one had their advanced life support team ready. The babies were moved through a window to a room next to the operating room, where they were checked out, made stable, and hooked up to monitors. After that, they were moved to the neonatal intensive care unit, NICU. Which was the start of a tough trip for these babies. Angie knew that her babies were in good hands in the NICU. Even though she wanted to hug them more than anything else. Even though she was ready to go to intensive care right away. She couldn't help but be upset about how little time she had with her girls right after giving birth. At birth. Each of Angie's triplets was very small. They each weighed less than 4 pounds. Because they were so small. They had to be kept warm in incubators while they grew stronger. Daniela, Annabella, and Camilla couldn't fully breathe on their own because their lungs weren't fully grown yet. The medical team had a plan ready in case the babies were born before they were due to help them breathe until they wr. E ready to do it on their own. 
All three babies were given continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP, which opened their airways by applying pressure. At one point, their oxygen levels dropped to 55%. And CPAP was very important in making sure they had enough air. Even though Angie was still on the operating table, she was able to look at computer pictures of her babies for the first time. Even though it wasn't the same as being with them and hugging them. Seeing that were okay made her feel better. Daniela, Annabella, and Camilla were there in the NICU. But they were never alone. There was always a nurse with them. As long as there was a chance of health problems happening, there had to be constant tracking around the clock. One of the registered nurses working with the triplets, Elena Harper, said she felt bad for the parents who had to be separated from their babies. When these three girls were born a few weeks early, there was a lot of confusion about what would happen. Daniela, Annabella, and Camilla were steady and breathing on their own just a few hours after they were born. Angie and Gino were relieved to know that their girls were healthy and making good progress. Even though they still needed to be watched and weren't ready to go home. It made Angie very happy to think about going home with her husband and three kids instead of being stuck in bed all day. She couldn't wait to get back to normal life with them. Angie could see the end of the tunnel. Even though she knew it would take a long time to get better. Angie's joy grew as she looked forward to meeting her new babies. And then Gino could finally meet their daughters once the triplets were safe. NICU nurses were used to dealing with parents who were scared. So when babies were safe, they shared in the parents' happiness. This made it easier for parents to rest. NICU nurses cheered Angie and Gino on as they saw their girls again. It was a very emotional moment. The nurse Alina Harper said she loved seeing the first touch between parents and babies. It was a special moment she loved being a part of. Angie was on painkillers and taking them because she had surgery. But all she could think about was meeting her three beautiful little girls. Being wheeled to the NICU with Gino by her side was the most exciting part. Angie didn't get to touch her babies right after they were born. But when they got to the NICU, a nurse gave each of them a baby. At that very moment, Angie was shocked to realize th. At the days she had to stay in bed were completely worth it. She was so happy that she couldn't help but cry. When she looked at Gino, all she could say was, it feels so right. Angie was away from her babies for a few hours, but it seemed like a long time. Even though they were only apart for a short time, she said she missed them, which made the meeting even more special. As Angie held each of her girls, she enjoyed special times with each one listening to their cries and putting them back to sleep. Angie felt a lot of happiness when she realized how strong her children were. Gino was able to hold each of his girls and made sure to have skin-to-skin -skin contact with the babies. The nurses made this possible by tucking the babies into Gino's shirt. This gave the babies skin-to-skin -skin touch, which is very important for premature babies who have trouble keeping their body temperature stable. Gino's body kept his girls warm and cozy by acting as an incubator. When Annabella was put on her dad's chest, she opened her squinty eyes and watched Gino talk. Which made me feel so happy. Gino was thrilled to see his baby daughter open her eyes and talked about how wonderful it felt to finally hold her. The triplets had a rough start to life. But they got stronger enough to go home after only a few weeks in the NICU. Gino and Angie added to their family by showing their triplets to their older brothers. The girls were still strong and healthy even though they were born early. A picture of them taken when they were just under a year old shows how healthy they were. The story then moves to the present and says that the picture was taken at the sixth birthday party for the triplets. Angie thinks about how much time has passed and how much her girls have grown and become stronger. The problems that came up while they were in the hospital and had to stay in bed seemed both far away and recent. Showing how quickly time can pass. Angie and Gino, who now have five kids, talked about the hard parts but stressed that they were determined to raise kids who are happy, healthy, and successful, even though being a parent can be hard at times. The couple is always there for each other, which makes the challenges of having five kids look easy. Although Angie and Gino agree that parenting doesn't look hard when you look at it from afar, they are overall very happy with the life they have made for their family. A few years ago, they were desperately hoping for a girl because they knew their Fami. 
L.Y. was missing something important. At the time, they didn't know that what was missing was the happiness that their three girls brought. Angie and Gino joke that their life is fun chaos. And their kids, who are all about the same age, add to the fun and make them feel like a family. The once busy atmosphere in Angie and Gino's home has calmed down as the triplets have grown bigger. They now feel completely at ease with having five kids in the house. And they can't imagine their lives without their three little girls. Being able to have their girls in their lives is a dream come true for Angie and Gino. Even though they got more than they expected. Above is today's story. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.